Welcome to Intro to Logic. In this video, we'll go over the rule of inference called modus tollens. Modus tollens is abbreviated with the letters MT. And in its simplest form, modus tollens entails that if we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent of that conditional, which in this case would be not Q since our consequent is Q, we can then derive the negation of the antecedent. Since our antecedent is P in line one, we can therefore derive not P. So if we have a conditional, which in line one we do, and the negation of the consequent, which in this case is not Q, we can derive the negation of the antecedent, which would be the negation of P, which is not P. So let's consider an example of modus tollens. Consider the argument, I will be cold if it snows, two, I am not cold, and therefore it did not snow. Now the first thing we have to do to determine whether this argument is in modus tollens form is to break up each premise and the conclusion in a symbolic notation and recall that we do that by um, labeling each sentence with a symbol or a letter so the sentence I will be cold can be represented with the letter C it snows can be represented with the letter S and keep in mind that with premise one um, we have a conditional and we know that because we have the word if in the sentence which uh, signifies that we have a conditional and in particular the antecedent always comes after the conditional or the part that says if. So um, if it snows is our antecedent and I will be cold is our consequent. So we have a sentence if it snows then I will be cold which means the same thing as I will be cold if it snows. And our second premise is I am not cold, which would be not C. And our conclusion, it did not snow, would be not S. So let's write that out. We have first premise, if S, then C. If it snows, then it will be cold. Second premise, it's not the case that I am cold or more colloquially, I am not cold. Therefore, we can conclude it did not snow. According to modus tollens, if we have a conditional, which in the first premise we do, and the negation of the consequent, which in the second premise we have the negation of the consequent, which is C, we have not C, we can derive the negation of the antecedent, which in this case would be the negation of S, not S. As you can see, this is a very clear example of modus tollens and how we may use it in our everyday reasoning. Hopefully it helps to add a little bit of clarification for your own understanding of what modus tollens is and how it works. So consider another example. Premise one. If I marry Joe, then I will be happy. Premise two, I did not marry Joe, and therefore I am not happy. Now to determine whether this is a form of modus tollens, we need to break up each sentence into some sort of symbolic notation. So the sentence, I marry Joe, can be symbolized with the letter M sentence, I will be happy, you can symbolize with the letter H. I did not marry Joe, then would be not M. And I am not happy would be symbolized with not H. So we have our first premise, if M, then H, which means if I marry Joe, then I will be happy. Premise two, I did not marry Joe, so not M and therefore I can conclude not H. Now recall that modus tollens says that if we have a conditional, which we do in our first premise, and we have the negation of the consequent, which in this case would be not H, 
then we can derive the negation of the antecedent, which would be not M. But notice that we have a conditional and the negation of the antecedent, not M, as our second premise. And we, from those two premises, conclude the negation of the consequent, which is not H. And this is actually an invalid form of reasoning. This is a fallacy that we call denying the antecedent. And you can see that it's a fallacious form of reasoning if you just go over this argument one more time. So consider the premises, if I marry Joe, then I will be happy. I did not marry Joe, <clears throat> therefore I conclude I am not happy. But notice that both premise one and two could be true and the conclusion could be false. From the claims, if I marry Joe, then I will be happy, and I did not marry Joe, we cannot derive the further claim that I am not happy, because there could have been something else that does make me happy. Just because Joe, or marrying Joe, could have made me happy, doesn't mean that nothing else makes me happy. So it could be true that I married Joe, or if I had married Joe, I would have been happy, and I did not marry him, but I'm still happy because there's something else that makes me happy. So we need to be very careful when using modus tollens, and especially careful with whether we're negating our antecedents or our consequence. Modus tollens only says that if we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent, can we get the negation of the antecedent, but not the other way around. To summarize, modus tollens entails that if we have a conditional and the negation of the consequent of the conditional, then we can derive the negation of the antecedent of the conditional. And it's as simple as that. This has been an intro to logic video on the topic of modus tollens. Be sure to keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.